Welcome to the 55th installment, my Nagas. <laughs> we made it, man. 55, let's go. We got five more of these, baby. Press the John. Investigation will always continue. The water will always flow. This is a great place to pick it up today, man. In the Voynich Manuscript. Digging on the Khan David connection, the Raja Haraja Chola. Love to Yosef, man. I, I've been <laughs> I've been promising to get back to this, man, for the bro Yosef, you know. Um and I found an old link, man, that's I'm really excited about. It's kinda like that the same feeling I got finding that Columbus link is how I felt finding this particular link right here. Uh, I thought it was gone forever, man, because they keep taking our links down. And now, for sure, for sure, I'm printing this one out as well. Oh, uh, man, you know, just just fall back, get cozy. A-hop to everybody, surfing the wave, we're doing it live. Shalawan to the drop, drop, chatter, chat, 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 chatter, get cozy. And they can't figure this out, man. They got their top teams at MIT, their top AIs, the AIs trying to figure it out. All they can say is, uh, this seems to be a Hebraic Indianized <laughs> a type of Indianized Hebrew, cryptic, encoded, an encoded Indianized Hebrew. So it has something to do with the three Indians. All right, got something to do with the Naga. But we can't quite get our hands on what this means. No one has a translation for it, but they say it has something to do with Hebrew and the Indian tongue in an encoded fashion. <laughs> something to do with nature, all kind of fancy plants and whatnot. And even with this, we know we're not looking at the the OG OG, I mean, this is a pretty good copy, even though, you know, this is coming out the Yale library here, you know, but eh, what does it mean, right? The question really surrounding the Voynich manuscript is when was it written in the, fourth, in the 15th century or 12th century or later? The common uh, trend on this is that this Voynich manuscript was written around the 15th century. But we're going to get from this uh, old fancy link here that we found. <laughs> and wait till you see where we found it, man. Wait till you see where we found it, man. <laughs> That's how crazy, you know. That's how much drop is coming in. <laughs> Sometimes you just got to come back home, man. Hey, I fall back. Hey, y'all let me know, man. Can y'all make any of this out? Let me get it a little bit. Let me get it a little bit. I mean, what are we talking about here? Maybe we can decipher the Voynich manuscript. I mean, for real, this this is a coded language, and even their AI can't can't crack the code. This is a sealed, magical language you're looking at, my people. I mean, nobody's bringing this to a hood near you. Ain't nobody dropping this off at your school, at your college. <laughs> you got to go to Yale University, and even then, you don't know it's in your library. What is it all about? What does it mean? Yeah, man, we're going to get to it. You know, so everyone, you know, guesses that it has something to do with plants. <laughs> what exactly are we talking about?
I'm leaning towards maybe the 12th century if we're going to line it up like that. But, you know, I'm definitely not drawing a conclusion yet on this one. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Y'all tell me, man, what do you see? We're going to get right to it. We're going to get right to it, yeah. This is about a 200 page document. Right. And man, do I wish we knew the code. One day, one day, we'll be able to crack this thing. It's gonna come right out of Drop Nation too, I can feel it. It's gonna come right out of Drop Nation. Tell me what y'all see though, in the Drop Drop Chatter, chat to chat chatter. You're going to use your third eye for this one, y'all. You're going to use your third eye. We must find a way to crack the code. But we can't crack it for them because, you know, they, they're looking for it, man. So we got to crack it on the slender. You know, we got to crack it just for us. We can't let them know what we find. No, no, no. But this language is amazing. This language is fascinating. Let's get to it. We're talking the Voynich Manuscript. And, you know, we're going to jump in. And, you know, uh, it's, it's so much fun digging on this, man. You know, I, I've been digging on other parts of the investigation with Preston John. It's, this is one of my favorite parts of the investigation. Talking about Roger and Roger Chola. The second man, love to Yosef the real man, press the giant emperor of Soli, Pandion. Who is press the giant? I mean, who y'all think press the giant is, man? I mean, do we have? I think we come a long way in this investigation. You know, just going back looking at the earlier drops. You know, really parts one through six. I was really kind of being very non-biased i was like hey is he a hijack is he this is he that i was throwing it all out there and then we started you know spiraling you know around king david a lot you know and then connecting it with moshe a lot and coming across these pandians and these cholas and this is very exciting because we're just talking israel just like we're breaking down the mongol we know that the magi is the mongol go get all those drops i'm gonna go you know what I'm saying? We hitting the gas right now. You know what I mean? So I'm not going to do a lot of going back back to the, you know, older drops. You know, we're we just going to hit the gas, man. So if you don't understand something, it's probably in a previous drop. You're just going to have to surf the way. Allow why? So, you know, we're just talking per PJ, man. So when we talk PJ, the reason why this David keeps popping up <laughs> Well, we're connecting David on many fronts. Whether you're talking Hong Kong, we connect to Khan David. Gang is Khan is starting to call himself King David. King David of the uh, of India. This Raja Haraja. Look at the date, estimated before 1195. Now I say, are you leaning on the Voynich Manuscript being written, you know, around the 12th century or 15th century? And this would fit that particular puzzle piece right there. You know what I mean? Roger here, Roger. Press the John. Who are the Cholas? Who are the Pandians? How does this connect with the with the Mongo Jin dynasties and, and Han and Han dynasties and Lao dynasties and all that we're digging on that's connected with the Kara Katai? That's why we spent so much 
developing a foundation over there in the Mongo connection because then it's not so far fetched of a stretch to connect the Mongo connection with this India situation. Not when you're talking India superior, right? Not when you're talking Grand Tartaria. You can put India Superior and overlap that on Grand Tartaria. Now, this is Preston John, king of the three Indias, my knock. The three Indias. And this Preston John right here, though, husband of Lady Hannah of Babylon, he's the father of Solomon the first, solely. It's a Jewish king of Telmas. Yeah, you see it. He's also the father of Hanan. <laughs> and look how they spell this Hanan, right? H-A-N-A-N. Now, if you drop the H, what do you get? Hanan. Yeah, we're going to have to get back into the uh, Anian Kingdom, right? The Anion Kingdom, which also connected us with the Straits of Anion. We're going to get back in with this Anon Ben David. You know? Because these Straits of Anion is this Bering Strait scenario, is this Bering Strait situation, you know what I mean? Which we still got it up here. That's a different one. I'm gonna have to pull it up again. Oh, oh wait, wait, that was that was that was pretty dope. That was pretty dope. That's pretty dope. That's pretty dope. Flapping all wings, doing what we do, eat the ring up. You know what I mean? Getting that glow, man. Y'all, how y'all feeling, man? How y'all reeling today, man? Y'all feel like y'all got that glow? Yeah, man. <laughs> All day. We're just talking to Barry straight, man. <laughs> Let's get this up again. And again, notice we're just talking Preston John is not very far from Mexico. So we ain't tripping when we're looking over here for our promised land. Am I not? A lot of people, you know, are very literal when they read the script or read with a dragonfly perspective. They'll read it. They'll read something, you know, you know, just like in Deuteronomy, you know, just breaking down. Oh, uh, you know, going to a land that or being returned to a land, you know, that that you've been, uh, you know, away from or whatnot. It's you. You're being returned literally from a land. That you have not possessed, my knock. You're being returned to a land that you're not mindful of. You have no mind. You have no connection to. It is foreign to you. You are returning to your land. It doesn't have to mean getting on a boat and crossing a whole ocean. It means that you are returning to your land mentally, physically, spiritually. You're being awakened. You're becoming aware that this is home. home, man. Press the John. All right, so we got the Baron straight right here. Anion, Anon, Anon, the Anion Regno. Remember all those great maps? We're going to get back in that. And this whole joint, I mean, even the uh, Amazon, the Amazon was once called the Mar Anon, A-N-O-N. -N. So when you look at Anon, and again, we're just talking Press the John. This is out. That map we just saw was from 1530 in the British Museum. Right? So they got this over here posted in the British Museum. What are you supposed to think about that? Oh, you're not supposed to pay it no mind today in 2020, right? You're just supposed to say, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I'm just going to go to Jerusalem over there. <laughs> yeah, okay. Even when you know what you know.
bearing strength. So this map maker has placed Preston John and his idolatrous neighbors. So think about all the idolatry surrounding and within the kingdom of Israel. Even, you know, dealing with those kings that we went over before, like Ahab and all the idols, you know, that they built to Baal and all that stuff, man. So Jezebel, all that stuff's popping off, right? So Preston John and his idolatrous neighbors. Not very far from Mexico. Yeah, let's pick it up right. I'm just talking Roger and Roger <laughs> Chola, man. Press the job. Let's go. We in part 55. We're hitting the gas. We're spreading our wings. So this Preston John is the father of a Solomon. And a father of a David the Six. And we, uh, man, I forgot which drop it was, but we, we went over a whole Exilarch list. You know what I mean? And uh, that'll be a fun little journey again to just go over the whole Exilarch list and try to compare and see which time frame we get from that. We will be talking some chronology. I do got some Anatoly for the Manko for you, man, already queued up. So that's going to be a nice little fun break to do as well because chronology is everything. We got to pay attention to the timeline. Parallel timelines in history. Prester John. Father of Exilarch David Sauslin of Babylon. Let's go there. So this would also be a prester. He is an Exilarch, meaning the ruler or the head of the tribe during Babylonian captivity, right? Which Georgia, though? Because you see my noggin, when you start putting this history together, and you're like, what's going on over there, and what's going on over here? And when you realize that you're already home, and Preston John is right here on your map in North America, my knock. He had such a foothold right here where the four corners is that they literally just put his name, Preston John. But they were searching for so long. You're already home. So when you look at Georgia, I really need you to look at Georgia, right? And we got so much popping off coming out of Georgia. Remember, uh, man, love to let us find the truth. He did his whole thing on slave names. And I think one of the number one slave names on this, at least on this list from this one particular plantation he was reading from was Andrews. And I said, dang, that's crazy, man. I mean, not only is it my last name, but, you know, I got family from Georgia and Louisiana, you know, all that. So, um, you know, I'm just looking into it out of curiosity. And then you get into these ruses, right? And that's when we got this out the red thread and we started looking at these crests. And we got deeper into that, which you know, I look forward to really digging. I mean, with a dragonfly for real, for real. So you got these Andrews, you know, one of the number one slave, slave names, right? One of the number one names popping up on some of these plantations down there in Georgia. So when I'm looking at the Exilarchs, and when we keep connecting this Rusha, this Rusha, which, you know, Anatoly does a great job connecting the Rusha connection, because that is the Mongol connection, that is Asia. It is all that Genghis Khan stuff, all this popping off. But these Ruses are weird. First found in Kathness, man. 
And then we start digging on this Cathay and the connection with this Katniss and Cathay. And back to this map of India Superior. Just like this one here, right? It looks very similar. Right? Pay attention to where Preston John is. And right here is what? Cathay or Cateo. So who are the Russes? Found in Cateo. Connected with the lost tribes of Israel identity. So you gotta pay attention when you talk Georgia, because the Andrews have a lot to do with Georgia. And obviously Babylon is could be anywhere. <laughs> Man, you know. For the Manco connects Babylon with uh, Russia as well, you know what I mean? So you could be talking, you know, Babylon there or Russia there and Georgia here and whatnot. But either way, you know you're talking here, so you got to keep this in play because you're just talking Preston John, right? Just talking Preston John. Now, this is the son of the first Preston, they say, right? Roger here, Roger Chola, the second. But of course, you know, Preston's a title, so. How could he be the first Preston if he's Roger, Roger Chola the second, my nigga? <laughs> so who's Roger, Roger, Roger Chola the first? And why wouldn't he be the first Preston? I mean, that's when we start getting into, you know, just tracing the titles and saying, okay, we, we see that it's not just one man you're looking for or connecting with. It's a lineage of a, of, of a priesthood. But this priesthood has been you know, mistakenly, blindly put in front of our face as Mongol, right? Mongol, but not until we get the drop. <laughs> We're talking Anatoly Fermenko. Can we connect the Mongol with the great, with the greats? And we can connect the Rusha, right? R-U-S with the Rus. So we know what Saracen, they're talking about, the, the Pope is talking about Nicholas V and the Papal Bull subjugate these Saracens. It was an attack on Israel, my not. Oh, no, not the, not the Muslim Saracens, my not. Israel, my not. We're talking all darkies, my not, right? And again, follow the town. Follow the town. Got to follow the town. Because when we're talking Magi, we must note that Magi, as mentioned above, are mostly, most probably the same as Mongols or Mongols. So now we know we're just talking the great ones. Kill everything you thought you knew. Just follow me now. Rock with me. Great ones, man. Great ones, man. Russes, right? Not not a white country, my nigga. A copper color country in which you're named, right? It's named after you. It's a title connecting with these pics, with these Rus from Kathness, Cathay, which we know is right here in the land of Preston John. Cathay, 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 Cathay. Press the jump. Cavness. Or Cateo. India Superior. Florida. Come on. We already home or not. So ain't no play play. So who's the XLR? David, the sixth Sauceland of Babylon and Georgia. Well, he's the son of Roger and Roger. Chola II, Jadaron Empire of Soli, Preston John, Pandian, and Lady Hannah of Babylon. So was there a Babylonian quote-unquote captivity? And, and what would that be? I mean, we would call this Babylonian captivity, my not. This, this would be Babel. <laughs> Huh? What captivity was popping off in which 
is a King David or Exilarch David, son of a Prester, right? Son of the Prester. Now listen, this David is the father of another Exilarch, Hasdai the Six. Now does this sound familiar, biblically speaking? Starts to have a familiar tinge to it. So these are exilarchs. These are cons, man. You can call them czars, cons, Caesars, emperors. <laughs> you know what I mean? And the brother of Solomon. So this David, the sixth, is the brother of Solomon the first. And the father of Hasdai, the six. He comes up a lot, man. This Saulsman comes up a lot. This is also a title. You know what I'm saying? We've been able to, you know, try to look at it from different flows. You know what I mean? Try to break down the Saulsman title. But, you know, I have a feeling we're going to crack that code as well. Because this goes into a little bit of the Bragantini dynasty. Because when you go a little off off the uh, track, you know, but on track, but, you know, you, you take a different trail on this thing, you run into another David Sausling, Manag. Now, where does this one lead us, Manag? Because we're just talking the same time period, man. So this is the same David Sausling. But now, instead of him being... Uh, Babylon and Georgia Axelark, right? They're just focusing on Georgia. Which one? Now they say he's the son of Jadaron, king of the islands, which is the same as who? Raja Hiraja Chola Jadaron, right? Look how they spell this Jadaron, man. Ain't to try to throw you off the trail, but look, 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 stay on the trail. Let's click this one because this is the same Presta, except do they call him Presta? No, they say Prince Jadaron of the Allens, King of the Allens. So when you start connecting these 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 Allens, you know what I mean, this all connects back to the same um, you know, this Anand bin David flow, this 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 Daniel uh El Kum, Al Kum situation. All this stuff is overlapping because Daniel's also an exilar, you know what I'm saying, during Babylonian captivity. Killian, David's son, right? King David's son, right? Mm. I mean, this is how you start. You know what I mean? You literally got to empty your cup when you come over here, boss. Because what we're carving out, we can't go nowhere else to get it carved out. We have to do it right here, right now. Tell me where else you going to go to start carving out Jadaron, King of the Islands, with the Bragantoni Dynasty, with this Babylonian, you know, Preston John, Roger Hiraja, Chola, connected with the Vodic Manuscript. Only the way. Only Hawa got us on this investigation. So I'm grateful to be on it. Because this is not me. This is us. Prince Jad around in the islands, they're calling here, is also... Raja Hiraja Chola II Jadaron Emperor of Soli or Presta John, who's the father of Solomon and the Exilarch David. Okay, okay. But they don't mention that right here, right? So let's see. I mean, sometimes we can get some other hints <laughs> by looking at other uh, angles, taking different trails. Now, he's, this one says he's the son of Atan, king of the islands. Now, these islands, all right, 
because you know we've we dug on this before elania and all this all this if he's the king of the islands that means islands is another code word for israel my not or judah my not now you can look in the islands and find more true judah you know real spill you can really dig on things because you've now connected these islands directly with what press the jar you know we're dealing with hebrews his son is david his son is solomon <laughs> you don't think there's no hebrew connection here this is the emperor man If it wasn't you, you would know about it. I put it like that. If this wasn't you, there would be a picture up here. I'll leave it at that. But because it's you, we don't know what he looked like. Because it's you, I never heard about Roger, her Roger Chola, the second Jadon Ron Preston John, Emperor of Soli, Soli Mine. Come on, man. Why are we just now getting digging on this? And now, I mean, this is immediate family. You can start connecting all this. But check it. Let's check this out, though. And this is why you got to take different trails, you know what I mean? Because they're going to lead you, you know, another one might give you one extra boost, one extra step, you know what I mean? Over here, you got Preston John, right? But does it tell you who his daddy is? Who's his daddy? Nah, I said he's the husband of Lady Hannah. And the father of all these children, right? Solomon, Hannah, or Anon, or Ania. Huh? <laughs> and David. Who's his father? Who's his daddy? So you got to come over here to the same Jadaran. And now it says he's the son of Aton, king of the islands. Now, let's see how this connects. It says he's the husband of Rusudan of Georgia. And here it says he's the husband of Lady Hannah of Babylon. Hmm. <laughs> now, I want to get back to his dad right quick, but come on. Are we talking other phantoms and duplications? We got Lady Hannah. Is she the same as this Princess Rusudan of Georgia? Well, let's click on Princess Rusadon right quick. We just surfing the wave, my now. She must be very important, man. Love to my lady dragons on the wall. <laughs> Come on. I can't forget my queens now. I mean, who's holding down the Preston? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, who's holding down the press? And what's that got to do with uh, Queen Khalifa? You know, what's this got to do with Sheba? Because clearly we're just talking titles. Because they still didn't give us a name. I mean, this is just a title. But at least it's taking us right into the Bragatonis. Which is just talking about the kingdom of Israel some more. Because she's the daughter of David the Fourth. So this Preston is married to the daughter of a David the Fourth, King of Georgia, Rusadon of Armenia. You see how they start taking you to a whole nother, but it's really the same, like another phantom of a family lineage that are just titles talking about the same damn people perhaps <laughs> perhaps we're just surfing away we don't have to be right you know right out the box it's just a matter of like looking at it with a little common sense and saying um if this is preston let's go back so you know i just want to make sure we ain't tripping everybody's everybody's with me on this how y'all feeling everybody really good we finding that balance we ain't getting tricked up and tripped up. We controlling our emotions out here. Let's go.
Prince Jadara. Right? Is the same Jadara. Roger here, Roger Chola the second. We're gonna get into these cholas and panties next. Alright. Husband of Lady Hannah of Babylon. Let's click on Lady Hannah of Babylon. Because this is the only wife is mentioned over here. Time frame is the same, you know, before 1195. All right. Mother of Solomon. Anna. Anna. Exilarch. All right, so that's what it's giving you here. Let's click over to her reflection over here, all right? The same Jadaron. He's the husband of Princess Rusadon. But now it gives a little more information on this Lady Hannah of Babylon. <laughs> I mean, you see, they look the same. Let me look at them. Clearly, they look the same. <laughs> All right. It's going to give you the basics here. Wife of this Prester, right? Wife of Prester John. Wife of Prester John. Wife of Jadaron, King of the Islands. And... David Bragantum. Ah. So she's the one. Ah. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Daughter of a David the fourth king of Georgia. The wife of Jadaron and David Bragantum. So what's happening here? Was she married before? I mean, which one is the, you know what I mean? Who's this David Bragging Tall, man? Ah, uh, whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa. He's a, look, come on, man. Now, Either these are the same people, David Bragantone and Jadaron. If they are, it's very, very, I mean, <laughs> we're talking high strangeness because she, immediate family, he's the father of Atan, and ain't Atan the, the father of, Jad of Jadaron? Father of Jadaron. Father of Jadaron. So she's married to Jadaron. And David Bragatun, who is the father of Atan, who is the father of Jadaron. That would be like her granddad or D this Prester's grandpops. Because let's go back. <laughs> let's go back. Go back, man. Hey, ain't no time, only the way. Right, Jadaron, right? Presser John, Jadaron, son of a time, king of the islands. And the father of a time is the same David Bragan time. David Bragatun. Princess Rusuda of Georgia. Son of David and Prince Rusuda. Right, right, right. Half brother of David Sausler. Wow. Wow. Hey, Amen. <laughs> we got to put this family tree together. I mean, we're just surfing on it in real time. So David Sauceland's who we've been digging on, right? Who's the son of Jadaron? Right, right, right. Okay. Roger here, Roger Chola the second. And Roger here, Roger Chola. 
Chola the second, his son is David Sost. Okay. His son is David Sost. His father is Jadaron, king of the islands. Or David Sosman's father is Jadaron, king of the islands. And his father, Jadaron, king of the islands, is Atan of the islands, who is the father of Jadaron, king of the islands. So this would be the father of Raja Hiraja Chola II. The father of Raja Hiraja Chola II would be Ata. I'm working out. I'm working this. I'm working this out with y'all, man. All right, would be Ata, and his mother would be Princess Rusadan. But wouldn't that also be Lady Hannah? Right, right. Father of Jadaron is Ata. Father of Raja here, Raja Chola II would be Atan. And Atan's father is David Bragatun. And his mother is Princess Rusadan of Georgia. Let me go back. Let me go back. So notice where here it says son of Atan, king of the islands. Husband of Princess Rusadan of Georgia. Unless there are two different Princess Rusadans of Georgia. What it's looking like here, and maybe y'all beat me to it, is if this is the son of Atan. Right? And Atan is the son of Rusadan. Then Rusadan should be Jadaron's grandmama. <laughs> so how is Rusadan? Hey, this is hey, y'all y'all let me know. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna leave that here for now. <laughs> Cause it's getting real, it's getting real around here. Now it's interesting though, and this is like two different Rusadan. But would Rusadan still be Lady Hannah? And that's what we're trying to figure out. I'm trying to figure this out with you. Raja Hiraja Chola II, Jadaron, husband of Lady Hannah. Let's check out these kids, man. Let's check out these children. Solomon, Hanan, and David. Let's go to Jadaron over here. It just says he's the father of David. Sosla. And this Raja Hiraja here is also the father of David. Sosla of Babylon. So we know at least these are matching up. At least these are matching up. Now again. If he's the husband of Princess Rusadan of Georgia. And that's his. Let me see. Let's, let's go to his pops. So this would be. This would be Roger here. Roger Cholo the second's pops. All right. Atan. And it has him as the son of this David Bragatun. And Princess Rusadan. Man. <laughs> All right. Which is crazy. Yeah, that's a that's a noodle baker right there. It's right here. Cause she becomes the wife of Jadaron. Okay, that's Presta John. And she's the wife of David Bragantoon, which is his granddad, which would make her his grandma. Mother of David Sauston, same thing, right? 
And she's the mother of Aton, and Aton is Jadaron's pops. Son of Aton, man. King of the islands. <laughs> so, <coughs> all right. <laughs> I mean, I'm getting, I'm getting, I'm getting the swing of this, but it's, it's, ooh wee. All right. So, <laughs> mother of David Sauster, king of the, king of Georgia, and she's the mother of his, uh, or her husband's dad. <laughs> okay. All right. Sister of Dimitri the First, King of Georgia. So you see all this Georgia, 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 Prince Georgia, Prince George of Georgia. Remember Genghis's name is also George. Princess Tamar, daughter of David the Fourth of Georgia, Bragantoni. So she's sisters to all these, you know, all these great ones, right? And Tamar goes hard. Remember Tamar, I mean. We dug on that before. Another lady dragon on the wall. I mean, these were uh, lady dragons, man. They really even ran the empire at some point. You know what I'm saying? Took over, you know, whatever they needed to. You know what I'm saying? And made it happen. So. Now, look at the way this uh, Bragan Tony is spelled different ways. All right. So you got this Bragan Tony here. Well, you know, we'll check it out, no, no doubt. We'll check it out, no doubt. Princess Tamar, David, daughter of David the Fourth of Georgia. Queen consort of Servan. Servan, okay. So who are these Shervans? Because here's another title popping up. Servans. She's the mother of Ak Sitan Shay of Servan and Farak Zad. Alright. Ansha, Sister Dimitri. I mean, who are you guys, right? Who are you guys? What's with the, all these fancy titles? All under the same lineage. And this is how they were connected with this David dynasty. So I want to get it back and, uh, you know, I just wanted to <laughs> refresh on some of the fun we have, especially when we dig on these Bragantonis, because again, this Raja Haraja Cholo II, his granddad is a David. You see what I'm saying? So you got to put this together by now. Why Why is everybody son of David, son of David? Why is everybody, why did this new test have to come up and tie this, this uh, new superhero and be a son of David? I mean, why is everybody rocking this David title? Why did Genghis Khan start calling himself King David? You think it's play play? Just type in Genghis Khan. Just, you know, see where it leads you, man. King David of India. Oh, wow. <laughs> Press the job. Or Presbyter John. <laughs> Amen. Or John the Elder. Or John the Baptist. Or Elijah. Here we go. Here we go. Believed to be an historian. We got that right. Old King. Renowned for wise counsel. That's what this historian title was referring to. The Magi. Right. Or the Mongol God. Because we know that the Magi, as mentioned above, are most probably the same as Mongols. So this old king Nestorianism. Let's see, I had it up before. 
pull it up again and let's store it. Oh, legendary wise king. <laughs> That's how they try to hide it. Wise old counselor, an old man, a senior in company. Sometimes you got to put the stuff in quotation marks because they keep changing these titles. And they actually took it out of uh, etymology. You should pop right up in etymology, then they change that. So we catch them slipping in the Google searches, man. <laughs> Looking in between the timelines. <laughs> hey, you see how they made me spell it so accurately just to get this little search thing to pop up? Just to get this search thing to pop up right here. You see how accurately I had to do that? But if I wasn't surfing the wave for all these years and didn't know exactly what it used to say, I would have never found it today in 2020. Because look how, <laughs> look at this Google search, man. It gave me two options ones and damn something like a chinese man. all right but even this is telling you nestor name for old king renowned for wise counsel 1588 so when it keeps saying historian they're only referring to an old king renowned for wisdom King David of India, right? Believed to be an historian. An historian. Old king renowned for wise counsel. This is not a Christian. This is con this is connecting to the old Khan dynasty. Old kings, old Khans, renowned for wisdom, rocking with the Amma. Rocking with the frame and the shape. Oh, Preston John was the center of a number of legends that hark back to the writings of John the Elder in the New Testament. Reflections and duplications. Right? You got the original, and then you got the reflection. And you got the OG. You got the Preston. <laughs> Always got to take it back to the OG. But let's tie it in with this King David of India. Because we were just talking the car could tie, right? Yeah. <laughs> and we we're just talking Magi's, right? Because this John, according to this John, a wealthy and powerful priest and king. That's what Prester means, priest. That's what John means, Khan, king. Reputedly a lineal descendant of the Magi. We, we can connect that with the Federmanko because we're surfing the wave. Most people wouldn't have all the tools to put this together, but Drop Nation, we've been doing it. We know that the Magi, the Magi are the great ones, are the Mongols, are the great ones. Okay. Okay. Lineal descendant of the great ones of the Mongol who have visited their 
priestess or we're just talking about an anointed child. Which anointed child would Preston John be rocking with? Preston John, Melchizedek, Melchizedek, been rocking with a lot of anointed children of the Most High. Abraham, I mean, you know, all the way up, man. Elijah's connected with <laughs> this Daniel flow, this, you know, it's all connected, it's all happening. Joshua is connected with this Moshe, Preston situation, part of the waters. So there's a lot of other options than you going into a New Testament version or duplication. Because we already know it's being duplicated. We just got that right here. President John was at the center of a number of legends that hark back to the writings of John the Elder in the New Testament. So why are they writing about this Ethiopian eunuch or this magi in the New Testament. And what's up with this gang is Khan calling himself King David. Let's just pick it up here. Kuluk, Kuluk, whose father's name was Tayang Khan, Great King John. Whoa. <laughs> Did y'all know that? Kuk Luk, K U C H L U G, whose father's name was Ta Yang Khan or Great King John in Chinese. So, this Great King John, Preston John, title extends to China or Kana, or as we like to call it around here, you know, La China. Yeah, we like to call it La China. Right here in North America, man. Great King John in Chinese was defeated by a great Mongol ruler, Genghis Khan, in 1218. So around the same period as we got before, 1202. Now we got a great King John <laughs> being defeated by Genghis in 1218. And watch this. In 1221, Jockeys de Vitry. Bishop of Acre in Palestine and Cardinal Pelagius, a Western churchman accompanying crusaders in Demetria in Egypt, reported to Rome. Where's Roma? Information about the Muslim defeat by a certain King David of India. Why is it so important for them to rock in this David title? And who's the original David? Now they're calling this David the son or grandson of Prester John. You remember Genghis Khan is consider Preston John's nephew or godson, right? So it says this King David <laughs> come on man, rock with me this King David probably was none other than Genghis Khan <laughs> because of rumors lack of reliable information or wishful thinking on the part of the European Christians, the historical events personage, personages of the period and geographical areas involved became interwoven into the legend of Preston John. So there's a figure around 1221 after Genghis takes out this John here. And calls himself King David of India. Why, my nag, if it didn't matter? Why? I mean, he's the son or grandson of Prester John. I mean, if it didn't matter, why? You think Genghis Khan would be calling himself something that wasn't powerful? You think old Genghis would be calling himself something that wasn't supreme, my nag? 
Chang is Khan is all about supremacy, my not. Any title he's rocking has everything to do with the Khan of Khans, Rex Regnu, the head Naga in charge, Rex Negus, David Dawi. So you see it popping up over and over again. And you say this David is the grandfather of this Preston John. Raja and Raja Achola the second. But this Preston John here, this Pandy and this Chola, is the father of Solomon, David the sixth Sauceland. And this is how we're linking this. He's the father of a David, 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 which will also make him a David by title. Because his granddaddy is a David. Check it. This David Bragantone is the son of another David Bragantone. <laughs> another David. Yeah, my nigga. Another David. So this is the great granddaddy of Roger here, Roger. Chola the second. David Bragantone. And has everything to do with this Bragantoni dynasty happening in Georgia, man. Because he's the father of David Bragantone and Atan Bragantoni. Atan. It's a lot going on, right? And the, you know, so between digging on the Allens, between digging on the Bragantoni dynasty, which we've done in previous Preston John installments, go get him. You know what I mean? We're putting these pieces together, my noggin. So with that, let's uh, dig on some of this, uh, you know, great link here. Look, you know, again, I, I put in some keywords and it took me, where is it at? Look, <laughs> this little thing here. And I said, whoa, this is very small. I want to read it to my people's. But I don't want to jam them up because it's so tiny. <laughs> so you know what I did, my naga? You know, I, I copied and pasted this, put it in Google. All right. <laughs> and you know what came up? It took us right back home. And the AHOP is real. Man, the AHOP is real. We copy and pasted this a long time ago, back in 2017, and love to the truth seeker who dropped this, man. AD dropped this back then, back then, man, years ago. And we took this and we copy and pasted it right here. So now check it. This just brought us back here. Now, this is the exact same as this little stuff. But instead of having to read it like this, my noggin. I can now read it like this, my knock. Ain't that dope that we put that work in, you know what I mean, for this moment right here, years ago? Now check it, check it, just so you know we're talking. This is the link that I, you know, had, uh, you know what I'm saying, this is where I had linked the information to. Now, when you click on this, this is just letting you know that the work is paying off, you know, from, you know, a few years back, man. You see what they did? They took the link away, right? They took it down. It's gone. <laughs> huh? So, <laughs> if we didn't do the due diligence, and again, love to AD, the truth seeker, being rocking the wave, man, and, uh... If we didn't do the due diligence, we wouldn't have this because this don't exist just on the Internet. If anything, they're going to make you have to get it like this. Ain't that some shit? They couldn't make this no bigger. Look at all this space. Why did they make this so hard for you to read? Huh? You about to find out. Because this, this might be the only legible copy on the Internet right here at 432thedrop.com. I know we got a lot of updates to go, but I'm just proud of the work we put in. And this is a great resource. If we never touch it again and just leave it up, 
this is this will be a great resource for a long time for a lot of people. So allow wa the water to drop nation. The water a D the truth seeker. Let's read it. Let's read about Preston John Roger here, Roger Cheller the second, right? Let's let us let us get into this. This Emperor of Soli, this Panion, this Chola. And let's see if we can connect some things back with this, uh, you know. I mean, this is a link that I didn't think I'll see again, man. So I feel like I'm getting it, you know, for the first time, man. And uh, let's see where it takes us. Preston John was Raja Hiraja Chola the second. All right, let's go. Prince Jadaran Bragantuni, the first Christian emperor. Ah, we know we're talking historians, right? Of the three Indias, right? We got three Indias. He was the grandson through his mother of Kolotunga Chola the second. So we're going to cross-reference some of these names. Because Kola, Kola Tunga could only be who? I mean, just by doing the recon. If if we didn't get it like this, right? If we didn't know that this Jadaran, right? Is this Jadaran? Well, let's go back. So now we can connect this Kula, Kula Dunga, <laughs> Kula Dunga. So this chat around here, where it's the same as this chat around here, right? King of the Islands, all right. Now it's his son of Atan, right? So focus on this Atan, right? This is his pops. Atan of the Islands. And let's get back into it. Grandson through his mother of Kolotunga Chola II. Grandson of Kolotunga through his mama. So let's go back up. And let's just connect this in real time. So Kolotunga is his granddad. So who's his granddad over here? If that's his dad. And this would be his dad and his grandma right here, man. David Bragatun and Princess Rusadan of Georgia. Quite possibly also Lady Hannah. Unless he had another wife. Uh, you know, it's possible. It's possible. I mean, I'm telling you, man, this is some cutting edge recon slicing through these Bragatonis and these islands and these Cholas and Pandians. <laughs> that's, a, that's a hell of a dig. The Bragatonis and the islands. Man, come on. It's just going to get even better dealing, dealing with these Osetis and Osets. Now, Atan is the son of David Bragantone and Princess Rusadon of Georgia. Let's go back. All right, over here, he's the grandson through his mother of Kolotunga. All right, so through his mother. So right here we're getting he, through his father. But who's his mama? Let's go back. His father is a ta. Right, it doesn't it doesn't list a mother right here. And it dang sure don't list a mama right here. We don't got it we, we don't have a father or a mother. So all we can do is look at the dad, click on the dad and say who's his wife? Who's the dad's wife? Right. Well, even here, it just has son of, so it shows 
his dad's dad and his and his grandmama. But it doesn't show who Atan is married to. Okay, so in order for that investigation to continue, we will have to know who Atan is married to, which would be Roger and Roger's mom. All right, and then through her, her mom or her dad would be the Kuladunga that we're talking about. All right, so, all right, I think we're okay. Let's go. Y'all with me? Drop, drop, chatter. We surfing the wave. We good. I'm checking in with y'all, man. I'm always going to check in with y'all. Let's go. So, his mama, through his mama, he's connected to this Kola Dunga Chola. So, it's a key name here, all right? The Cholan Soli Emperor of the Three Indias. So, is this Chola also the same as the Soli, the Soul? His father was a Bragantuni Prince Atan of Osets. So we got we got who his dad is right here, right? We, we know he's Atan. Just, you know, so we know we're on the right track, which means that the islands are also called the Osets, right? Okay. All right. And just for fun, as a reference point in Wikipedia, we've done this before, just uh, putting in the islands, old sets, something like that. Let's see. How do they spell it? Osetians. All right, here we go. Osetians or Osets, they, they call them an Iranian ethnic group of the Caucasus Mountains, <laughs> indigenous to the ethno-linguistic region known as Ossetia. All right. They speak Ossetic and Eastern Iranian Alanic language. So Alan's got their own language of the Indo. Uh-oh. They're telling on themselves. <laughs> We're just talking to India's kind. Indo-European language because they're also connecting it with the Russes and Russia, which would be Europe, with most oft also fluent in Russian. Well, who's the Rus? Russia is named after, you know what I'm saying, these this lineage of this of this Andrews, St. Andrews situation, which is connecting with this Jerusalem kings, these princes, these khans. Rocking the shield, talking about wisdom, right? Nestorian, old king renowned for wisdom, Khan. Huh? We're just talking Israel. We're just talking Rusha. So, don't budge when we talk Georgia and Ossetians or Ossetians or Ossets, because we're just talking the Rus. We're still just talking the roots all right stay right here stay right here don't budge and if you're talking russia you're talking asia you're talking the mongols which means you're talking the who the great ones right the magi okay? so this is why they're trying to do a new testament flip on us although a session is related to the indo-european languages owning by its by its origin it is not mutually intelligible with any other language of family today yeah i guess not because the real noggins that were speaking it ain't even you know around to speak it like that right so they call it ossetic a remnant of the skitho sarmatian or sarmatian dialect and the skithos connected back to these skithians man which is going to connect back to this um you know uh uh queen um queen khalifa you know, back to that whole situation, the Amazon situation, Scythian, Scythian languages connect back to this Amazon situation. I don't know if we can get it quickly, man, you know, because <laughs> I could do this all, man, we could do this all day, Scythian, 
Let's see if something comes up if I just put skip the Amazon. Oh, oh, oh they already popped up. I already saw something. Amazon Warriors. Oh, come on, man. Come on, man. Y'all thought, th thought this was play. Y'all thought this was play play. Oh, look how they got their pictures of the hijack. Nah, they, 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 these ain't the Amazons. These ain't the Amazons we know. Nah, these ain't the Amazons we know. See, this movie Wakanda, you know, all the female warriors, these would be what they call Scythians, right? But Scythians also connects to Scots. And when you talk to Scots, you're talking Scotia, like the Princess Scotia, the melanated Princess Scotia of the Scots or the Scythians. How does this connect to these Amazons, man? We're just surfing the way. Yeah, I mean, now all the mythology got to come together. Check it. Herodotus and Strabo placed them on the banks of the Thermodon River, according to Diodorus, given the account of Dionysius of Mytilene, of Mytilene, the Amazons inhabited ancient Libya long before they settled along the Thermodon. So when you talk Greek mythology, when you talk Amazons, Argon, Argonaut, Ar, Argonautica, Nautica, huh? See, man, these, these these clothing brands be popping up. You don't know where where the origin is till you start digging on this stuff, man. Nautica is Argon Nautica. Mentions of the Amazons were the daughters of Ares, Harmonia, a nymph of Acmonian wood. Okay, okay. Yeah, we're gonna do a whole drop on the on my Amazon queens, man, because we're just talking to Scythian women. Amazon warriors were often depicted in battle with Greek warriors in Amazon maquis in classical art. Archaeological discoveries of burial sites with female warriors of the Eurasian st steep suggest that Scythian women may have inspired the Amazon myth. Come on, man. Connect this with me, man. Connect this with us, man. We are surfing the way. The Scythian women inspired the Amazon myth, or did the Amazon inspire the Scythian myth? Or we're we just talking the same damn thing, right? Let's go back. We're just talking Ossetians. All we did was dig on Ossetians, and we got all this drop. Just surfing a waving wiki, my knock. Ossetic, a remnant of the Scytho Sarmantian dialect. When you click, when you scroll over that, Scythian languages, a group of Eastern, uh, keep putting there Iran or Persia. Remember, Persia is another vague terminology. We broke that down. We're just talking. Again, pure land, beautiful land, promised land. Where is Persia? Where is the pure, beautiful land? Where is Kalelus? Where are these skithos really talking about? The Amazons? Well, where's the Amazon, my naga? Huh? That's a giveaway. It's a layup for you. Where's the Amazon? Remember I just said the Amazon River is called the Mar Anon? Come on, man. Love to the family, man. We've been doing this, man. We're having a good time. Impressive John. Installment number of 55. Managa. Let's just pick it up here, man. I'm just talking Amazons, man. Amazons, which means I'm talking Scythians or Ossetians or Allens or the Cholas and the Pandians. The Bragantoni Dynasty. Yeah, what's a meteor, my night? <laughs> Let's go, man. 
What's the Amazon, man? What's the Amazon? Oh, this name has been given to some American females on the banks of the largest rivers in the world. The same as the Scythians, right? Got it. Who joined their husbands in attacking the Spaniards. Body bag, Daniel. So the Scythians, they keep trying to put them in Persia, Indo-European. They are the sisters. <laughs> Scrapping with my Nagas, with the Prestas right here, my Naga. We're right here, my Naga. Where's the Amazon? What else is the Amazon called? Maybe we just talked about the Bering Strait and Anion and Anon. And then you got this Hanan, the son of uh, Presta John or Roger, Roger Cholo II is also Hanan, H-A-N-A-N. I said, what's it got to do with Anion or the Mar Anon? We're just talking Scythian <laughs> or Amazon. These warlike masculine women, right? This name has been given to some American females. American females. What's an American? Matter of fact, what's a con? Who's the Grand Con? What's the Grand Canyon? What's the Grand Canyon? Copper color races found here. Copper color females found here that are fighting the fucking Spaniards, man, right? That first visited there on the front lines. This trivial occurrence gave the name Amazon to that river. So this occurrence is why the Amazon is called the Amazon. Based on my sisters on the front lines, my Naga. The front lines, my Naga. The Scythians, right? The Ossetians, right? The Allens, right? The Bracantonis in Georgia, Khan, fighting the Spaniards, my naga. This trivial occurrence gave the name Amazon to the river Amazon. But before that, the real name of the Amazon is what? Mar Anon. What is Mar? It's just like a water, a waterway, right? So you can look at the uh, maps. You see Mar this, Mar that. See, more of this, more of that. More of this, more of that, right? <laughs> We're just talking Anon, my God. Amazon. American female. Amazon fighting the Spaniards. Scythian women may have inspired the Amazon myth. Oh, y'all thought it was play, play. I get it, I get it, I get it. Ossetians are a remnant of my Scythian family. So my Naga, when you talk to Allens, and you wonder why it's connected directly to Jadaran, of the Allens or the Ossets, which connect to the Scythians or the Amazons, and Prester John Saliman, father of Solomon the First.
I'm talking to Axelars. Now his wife says his Limbu Queen of Rabudani, Ghani, and Mani. <laughs> so, who's Solomon's wife here, man? Labana, a hey, love to the dragon, uh, lady dragon on the wall, Labana, man. Come on, baby. Limbu. Hey, ha. Hey, ha. Wife of Solomon. That's all we know. That's all they're going to give us on her. But she's the queen of Rubani, Gadi. And money. Hey, it's too good, man. This is too good. This investigation is too real, too true. So we see how this is all connecting with the Scythians, this Amazon, and you see this all rocking side by side with Khalifa. So this would be Cali over here, and Preston John, and Udall, and, and Judah. So you got Judah, with Solomon's from Judah, right? So you got Judah, you got Solomon. And you got Sheba or Khalifa. Queen Sheba is Queen Khalifa. Let's go. Rocking, holding down Cali, right? So you, this whole area, side by side, fighting the Spaniards. Fighting the hijacks. You're starting to get a glimpse of what the war looked like, but they weren't fighting white people. They weren't fighting whites. <laughs> they weren't fighting, you know, pale-faced Spaniards, man. They were fighting nigga Spaniards. It's a more and more war. Let's get back to this part. Man, I'm so grateful that we can surf the wave on this dock. Let's make sure our time is good for a great dismount here. Allow wa the wada. For giving us the 360 degrees dragon flit eye perspective. Wow. Let's go. So we got Preston John, Roger Haraja, Cholo the second. <laughs> All right. The first Nestorian, right? Old king renowned for wisdom, emperor of the three Indias, his grandson through his mother. Cholo Dunga, Cholo II, Cholan Soli, Emperor of the Three Indias. His father was a Bragantuni, Prince Atan of the Osets. Wiki states, according to the historian in Sethar Raman, Raja Raja was not the direct descendant of Raja Raja Cholo II or Raja Raja Raja. So you got Raja Haraja and you got Raja Raja. Okay, all right. So you got Raja Haraja. Haraja. All right, then you got Raja Raja. <laughs> Chola II, but was the son of his sister. Raja Haraja Chola II chose Raja Haraja as his heir in 1166. And I remember the Preston John letters written right around this time. And we're also getting that this Voynich manuscript might have been written around this time. And again, what's happening here in America, right? According to what we're putting together, you know, outside of what's happening in Georgia and, and Russia and really most likely right here. This is all we're trying to say is what's happening here. Well, before Colombo comes, nobody has any history, right? There's no written history about what's happening in America. That's why that Forbidden Histories of America doc is so, you know, pinpoint because it's breaking down the Sylvanus to Texas and that whole history from the 700s up, you know what I mean, and to Israel the third, Israel the fourth, and all the Toltec connection. And now you connect that same time. Remember Tenoch Titlin sprouting up around the 1300s? Put it all together. Preston John was succeeded by his younger brother, Cholo Tunga, Cholo III. Wait, what does it say here? Roger Haraja was not a direct descendant of Roger Roger Cholo II, but was the son of his sister. So I believe this also connects with this Tamar situation, Queen Tamar.
Raja Haraja Chola II chose Raja Raja as his heir 1166 and he did not have any sons of his own. Presta John was succeeded by his younger brother Kolo Thunga Chola III. When Presta John retired to be a Christian monk, you know, I'm skipping up. How many times they got to keep writing Christian? You know what I mean? How many times get, they got to keep trying to brain rosters? <clears throat> throw this Christian in our face, right? When we know. We know after putting in the exact search. <laughs> you got to put this exact search in to get this now. The nest store is a name for old king renowned for wise counsel. So they have to keep putting the nester in front. All right. They have to do it. They can't just give you Preston John as a Christian. You know, they, they can, you know, those that, you know, don't want to be well respected can do that. But those that are respected, they have to put the nest store in on it, man. Right. Because he's not a regular, you know. Uh, you know, New Testament Bible thumping, Jesus loving Christian, right? We're talking about just a title connected to this wise, you know, counsel, this wise lineage, this magi, old con, old king lineage. And what we got right here. So he retired to be a monk or a hermit. <laughs> what does that translate to? You know, they say he's a nomad traveling from place to place and all that, right? So let's go. Kalatunga helped Prester John's son, Vikarama Pandian, by his Pandian wife to become Pandian king. So... That was his younger brother, Kolothonga, who helped Preston John's son, Vikarama, Pandian, by his Pandian wife to become Pandian king. So the Cholas and the Pandians clearly seem like they was rocking, at least at some point together. And what is that, you know, what's a Chola and how would you relate that with Israel and biblical, you know, flow? You know, what would be a Pandian? What would be a Chola? Vikarama's son, Jatavaraman rebelled against his Cholan cousins but was defeated and submitted to Cholan overlordship. Jatavarman's brother Mara Varaman, on succeeding him, attacked the Cholans and became the emperor of the three Indies. He restored the policy of religious tolerance in the empire like his grandfather, President John. Almost sounds like, you know, first kings and second kings, you got this lineage of kings. Some followed the code and some did not follow the code, right? So I'm so so grateful we got all that already, man. Let's go. So he restored the policy of Preston John or King David. However, his son Maravarman Sundara II was defeated by Rajender Chola III, the grandson of Kolotunga Chola III, Maravarman's the second son, Jatavarman III, seized back the throne of the Three Indies. They call it the what? The throne of the Three Indies. Sounds like Game of Thrones, man. His son, Maravar Bomb, Rambam. Mm, almost sounds like that Randam. <laughs> Rambam, huh? Was killed by his illegitimate son, Vera, when he declared his legitimate son, Sundara, as his heir. Civil war broke out, and Sundara asked for Muslim help. The Muslims eventually seized power for themselves. So he went outside the family. Sundara's daughter, who married the Australian Javanese king of the Rubani, Gadi, and Mani. Remember, we just got that. That uh, his wife, whose wife is this? Because we were trying to find the Kulu Thanga drop. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's 
get that back. Yeah, David Slauson, husband of Tamar. All right, all right, all right. I mean, all these plays, man. It's just, it's, it's, it's a beautiful puzzle piece to put together when you got the frequency to do it and you need a strong team of reconners like we got. You know what I mean? I mean, we're going back connecting recon from 2017, 16. Everybody's been surfing wave, a hive. So we got to get to this mark together. How we got to get there. So a time who is Roger and Roger Cholos the second's father, a time. Actually, uh, I'm looking for who was married to. It might have been. I think we looked at Solomon. Let's click on Solomon. been this one okay here we go so we clicked on Solomon I believe this one he said he's married to husband of Labana yeah that's the one so Solomon the first has this Labana limbo situation popping so let's see she's the queen of Rubani Gadi and Manny all right okay let's go back here what do we get and again, it's all about this throne of the, of the three Indias. Now it says, the Muslims eventually seize power for themselves. Sundara's daughter, who married the Australian Javanese. King of Rubani, Gadi, and Mani. Right? is proclaimed Empress of the Three Indias. Hmm. Are they saying that these are the Three Indias? And again, this is a body bag that the Scythians <laughs> are the Amazons that are fighting the Spaniards. So they can't keep putting the Scythians, the Osets, or the Islands over there when they're over here fighting the Spaniards. Right here in America, man. Connected with the Amazon. But we might have another little lead here. Let's do it like this. Uh, three Indias. In this one man <laughs> oh yeah we got to get real specific on this one too all right all right let me just take this part out and do it like this Okay, we got a Prince Joseph popping up as well. Huh? 
All right, man, that's a whole nother rabbit hole. Okay, we pop up, man, because we've been digging on it. <laughs> yeah. And Amazon High Queen. Ooh, Eli. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Well, that's the name of the blogger. <laughs> Another Elijah connection, man. Oh, no. Let's go. <laughs> It's going to be a beautiful dismount right here, baby. You know how we do. Okay. Okay, another Amazon queen. Another Scythian, huh? Look how far they put this one back. Remember them swan knights? Remember that Ofer? See any keywords pop up? So it's a whole barber, Berber situation taking place. North Africa situation taking place. This queen of Mor Morocco. Uh oh. Let me see what we're getting at. This is a gateway to a hidden Amazon city. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. Come on, y'all. Wow. All right. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm surfing the wave, man. Left Morocco, moved to Paragala, the fairy castle, to take her role as the Amazon High Queen. This was a gateway to a hidden Amazon city. The Persians, Indians, and Armenians and their legends divide the Amazons, or fairies, into two groups known as Peri and Deves. The Peri are seen as good fairies. Remember, the fairies are also cold word for dragon. We got that before. Who broke with the bad fairies, which they call Deeds. Mm. In fact, the Peris are those Amazon queens who reign from Paragala. And the Deeds, or Dewi, or Dewi, those who reign in Kanka. Kanka. Oh. Uh-oh. Descendants of the Queen of Sheba. Or Thebe. Now you got what they call Thebes, right? <laughs> Kanka was on the bank of the Thebe or Sheba River, man. They try to put this in Australia, but my naga, we, we can connect this where they couldn't when we talk Amazon. And shout out to the lady dragons on the wall. Can you dig it? So these are the Amazon queens. And notice it says of Manny, Mani, right? So it's those is money in here. So now we've done a little recon. We can see when they put that money, Gadi Rubani, queen. This is an Amazon queen. And this is why when we was digging on, you know what I mean? All that Allen Oset situation, it also connected with the Skiths, which connected the Osidians or the Skithos. And the Scythian women may have inspired the Amazon men. <laughs> so, the Scythes are the Amazons, are the Assets, are the Islands. The Remnant are the High Queens. Love to my lady dragons on the wall. Wow. We got to do a whole series on this High Queen. I told y'all we got a Khalifa series coming, but... It's, it's opening up on us like this there. 
And these will be the queens when I look at narrowing down this situation. Labana is estimated between 11.35 and 11.95. So where could she fit in? 11.35, Ah, you got this Rubani situation again. So we saw the Manny, we saw the Mani, now we got the Rubani. Now we got the Rubani. Okay, we're just talking about the Amazon High Queen. So, whichever one she fits in at, it's getting very interesting, Khan. <laughs> it's getting very interesting. Lady Esther. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh, boss. Would this put us uh, around? That Mordecai situation, I mean, would that push that to around 1500s, 1600s? Did we say, you know what I'm saying, talk about how the book of Daniel could have easily been written around the 1600s, something like that? <laughs> Lady Esther of Ms. Rai, like Ms. Raim, huh? Huh? <laughs> Come on, man. Man, I'm liking I'm liking this connection with the lady dragons on the wall, man. I'm liking this link a lot. I gotta print this out before this gets uh snatched down as well, cause I can see we're gonna have a good time connecting with my my sisters, my Amazon queens. I mean, I'm sorry, sisters. I'm sorry how they do y'all. They do us like this too. Hijack City, you know, hijack city. Well, what? There were a number of Amazonian queen residences. Let's back it up right here. It is not altogether clear if the Amazon high queens moved from residence to residence in a regular cycle, as did other Amazon or fairy queens. Again, when they say fairy, that's another code word for dragon queens, my naga. According to ancient and medieval legends, there were a number of Amazon or fairy queens in different parts of the world who all owed allegiance to the Amazon High Queen. Now, who do you think was holding that high seat? We're talking Sheba, right? We're talking Khalifa. Now, look at this, man. The High Queen also had a seat on Antarctica. I'm out of here, man. I'm out of here, man. And again, they keep throwing this 1530 date which all these maps <laughs> keep linking up to the same damn thing. Circa 1530. And then right around here, you got what? Prester John. So this is everything relative. And that's why we got this Prester John. Raja here, Raja. <laughs> popping off. Man, we popping off. 55 parts of the Preston John investigation a loud one how's my wave surface doing did you become the water yet or do you still need your surfboard it's the fourth wave you are the water Roger here Roger Chola all right Preston John this is why this is all connected my not so 1530. 1530. Remember that map, that German map that had Antarctica and it had Shambhala on top of it? And he said, why is there Shambhala in Antarctica? What's really in Antarctica frozen over? Is that a spell? The High Queen also had a high seat on Antarctica before 1530. There was another in Africa and another in South America. 
There were a number of Amazonian Queen residences on Antarctica, including the Ellsworth Mountains, Henderson Pyramid, <laughs> and the Prince Charles Mountains or the Moore Pyramid. Come on, I didn't know there was a Moore Pyramid in Antarctica. Did you? The area of Antarctica around Prince Charles Mountain was part of the Amazonian Queendom of Sunda in the Middle Ages? When it was snow free? <laughs> Did y'all expect to uh, be digging on this right now? I didn't. I'm just serving. I'm just looking for the Scythians and Ossetians. But for anybody doubting the Preston John investigation, just know it leads to our queens. It leads to our queendom. It leads to our sisters. It leads to Antarctica before it was snow on it. It leads to Shambhala or Sibola. It leads to Sheba. Or Shimbala, right? <laughs> Come on, man. Oh, man, please. Yeah. It's too good. Man. It's too good. Just talking Sheba. I love talking Sheba, man. Forbidden Histories of America. By David Lowe. Let's go. Let's go, man. Pull up the link. Let's go. This is going to be the best dismount of all time. <laughs> we just want to talk Queen Khalifa. We just want to talk sheep. I said we talking Sibola, 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 Sibola is Shimbala. Pama Granata, Pama Granata. We're just talking you, dog. Yeah. 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 Seven cities of Cibola, Cibola, Cibola. Septim, Septimania. Seven, Septis, seven, Septis, seven. Seven cities of Cibola, Cibola. Come on. Let's go. I want to talk Shibu. Get back in these cholas and keep the. Keep the water flowing. Artifacts in America, huh? All right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All the good stuff. We're going right to it. Now, when we talk Shambhala, Managa, again, we're just saying a pure land, a pure land, the same title as Cathay, Cathay, oh, Cathay is also pure land. So Cathay would also be Shambhala or Cibola, but they're looking forward and it's not necessarily always a physical place like that. Sometimes it is an energetic realm or a gateway, right? We're talking gateways. We just belly flopping, getting right to it. I just want to talk sheep. We could talk lotus flowers. We could talk all this stuff. But we got to. <laughs> got to stay on code, man. Got to stay on code. All right, let's get it. And then you see these beautiful paintings. You know, in India, right? It says, remember the Kincaid, the finder of the Grand Canyon City, said over 100 feet from the entrance is the cross hall, several hundred feet long, in which was found the idol or image of the people's God sitting cross leg with a lotus flower. So he's just, con he's just connecting the India Buddha with the Grand Canyon old school or the you know what you want to call uh india superior which is why you got this india connection popping off right here in shambhala right but we're just talking sheep 
mother of Solomon, daughter of the oath, covenant, daughter of seven, daughter of seven. Gotcha, gotcha. So we're just talking the daughter of the oath, my knife. Okay, we're good. So we look, 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 daughter of the seven. Let's take it back a little bit. We're just talking my we're just talking my sisters, my lady dragons. We're talking the wisdom of Solomon. No other in the many histories of so many religions and cultures of the past compare even or even resemble the wisdom of Solomon and the man himself other than Buddha. So he's connecting Solomon with Buddha, my knock. All right. But how could they possibly be one and the same? And neither and neither sides of the coin or medallion in this case seem to know it. You know the answer. There are none so blind as those who will not see that what Buddha is a reflection of King Solomon. We're talking the wise ones, right? The ones of wisdom. And this is why they keep on calling us. What? Did they call us again? Nestorians, right? They keep saying Nestorians. Old king renowned for wise counsel or wisdom. What's this connection with wisdom that they keep referring to us, right? Every time we go to the roots, you see this this towel right here, and the motto is wisdom is the conqueror of fortune. So you need mama to be fortified as a kingdom. Con forbidden histories. We got the wisdom of Solomon. Who's the wisest folks? None other than Buddha. Let's go. Let's go. And in the next verse in the book of Kings, right? We got a lot of kings last time with that Elijah drop following King Solomon's men returning from the land of Ophir. Remember Christ of Ophir? Who's fighting the Spaniards? The Scythians? The Amazons? The Queens? Sheba is Kali, is Khalifa. And there's a whole nother job we got to do on Sarah Kali, man. <laughs> uh oh. Hmm. Did Joshua have a daughter? You know, I'm talking Moses is Joshua. Did he have a daughter? If he had a daughter, would her name be Sarah Kali, and would that be Queen Khalifa? Let's go. First Kings 10 and 1, and when the Queen Sheba heard the fame of Solomon concerning the name of Hawa, she came to prove him with hard questions. Now, the scholars of the Hebrew would have us believe that the word Sheba is a foreign derivation, providing no definitive translation, and yet they tell us that it is the name of the early progenitors of the tribe of the Ethiopian, Ethiopian district, where, pray tell, did they come up with this? I could answer, but I think I'll hold my thought. Bathsheba, Bathsheba, mother of Solomon, is the daughter of the oath or the covenant. Bathsheba, daughter of the covenant, daughter of the seven, seven cities of gold. Foreign, they say, perhaps Solomon's mother was an Ethiopian daughter of the oath. Sheba, Shebo, son of Rama, oath, covenant, or seven. The queen of Sheba, Shebo, Oath, Covenant 7, is not of Ethiopian origins or African origins and is all likelihood was not even from that continent in which Israel is found, except we know that Israel is found over here. So it would be <laughs> from the real Ethiopian continent. If so, she was from India. What? Superior. Let's go. But I suspect she was of a distant land with ties to India and likely a descendant of Shem. So she wasn't from Africa. He's saying she was from Shem. With Sheba possibly being a shortened version or an intended misnomer of Shimbala. So we talk Queen of Sheba. You're talking Shimbala, which means you're talking Sibola. Which means you're talking the same area. Where Preston John is. Cibola. 
Shambhala, Sheba, Cali, California. <laughs> Kalelus, Kalix, let's go. Mother, a shortened version of an intended misnomer. Shimbala, a child of children of Shim or Hindu. Uh oh, intended to keep you in the dark. Let's go. Let's, go. Let's get back to it. Let's get back to it. <laughs> Where were we, man? <laughs> are we still digging on this one here? Because it gets too good to us, man. We're just talking Antarctica. <laughs> Amazonia Queens. Shimbala. Sheba. Antarctica. The Moore Pyramid, which we got to dig on some other time. The area in Antarctica. All right, they call it the Queendom. The Amazon Harris would be usually re reared with her father's family, then at the age of 8 to 10, be sent to the Amazons for training for about 5 to 7 years, usually in the court of the Amazon Queen or High Queen. She would be married and live with her husband's family until the death of the Amazon Queen, and then she would succeed her mother or grandmother. The role was a quasi-religious one. Quasi religious, or were they keeping the code? And the Amazon Queen not only had women warriors, but also had groups of male warriors and seamen that served her. They had a matriarchal feudal society with the Amazon High Queen or a High Queen of Rhoda. Remember the Rhoda situation? Rhode Island, remember all that? With lesser Amazon Queens in different regions of the world, the Duchess. The marches, marchingness. All right, so you have female warriors, male warriors, right? You had the Davids, you know, fighting. They're fighting side by side with they, with their women warriors, man. And this is what the Spaniards had to deal with, right? That's what we got from the Amazon. The Amazon River was named after these Amazonies or or these or these Scythians. Let's get back to this great link here, man. Let's take it on home. So now when we're connecting the Rubani and the Gadi and the Manis, you know, we, we're, we're running right into them. We're running right into them now. Lady Esther, though. Come on, man. That's a good one right there. We're running right into the Rubanis, Gadis, and the Manis. Now, she's in the 1300s. She's the princess, and she has this title. And again, it's very similar, very similar to the title of Solomon's wife. Prester John's son. Labana. Now we see that queen of Rubani. Now we got a reference, right? We know we're talking Amazon queens, man. So, of course, Prester John's, you know what I'm saying, son, Solomon, is marrying an Amazon queen. That's all we need to know <laughs> to connect. Sheba, Solomon, how everyone connected. You know? Now we could, I mean, this investigation really makes the Bible come to life, man. Because we can now connect it through the indigenous truth with a 360 perspective. Let's keep going. Now check this out. Check this out. Check this out for the dismount. And then we're going to continue in this link. And I suggest y'all print it out, man. That's all I can say. Roger here, Roger Tola the second Jadaron, the first Preston child, Nestorian, right? Emperor of the Three Indians, the so called Voynich Manuscript. Here we go. 
Make a nice dismount here. The Voynich Manuscript is a 15th century copy of the original, which was written by him in the 12th century. Huh? Huh? <laughs> Come on, man. The Voynich Manuscript, they're saying is a 15th century copy of the original, which was written by Prester John. And I'm saying, oh boy, they're trying to decipher it and no one can break the code, my nami. And you know, the question that we're throwing out there Here we go. As we dig on this, uh, you know, Voynich drop. You know, it becomes, you know, more than just what, what does it say, but really what is it, you know, really truly symbolized to us. You know what I'm saying? How does it pertain specifically and particularly to the tribe? If no one can crack the code, and what are they calling this language? So Prester John wrote the original in the 12th century, the same time he wrote the Prester John letter that got to all the kings everywhere in all languages. The language in this Voynich manuscript, my naga, says the language is a Hebreo Georgian Indian language of the royal house. And this is an uncrackable code that they cannot it's encrypted Hebrew is what they like to call it now. Hebreo Georgian well, which Georgia are we talking about? Hebreo, Georgian, Indian. Come on. You'll never see this combination describing no languages, man. So it's Hebrew, but it's a Georgia kind of Hebrew, but it's an Indian Georgia Hebrew or Indian Hebrew in Georgia. Come on, man. Come on, man. We're just talking the Voynich Manuscript. I mean, what does this language look like to you? Would you read it from right to left or left to right? This Hebreo Indian Georgian language of the royal house, the regal Negro, his son by his black Panian wife. He's <laughs> gonna, gonna let you know we're talking about Nagas, huh? Was King Vikarama Panian. He had at least three sons by his Hebrew wife, Lady Hannah. Who's married to Lady Hannah? David Sauslin. Ain't that David Slauson's wife? I mean, are we connecting this in real time, my knock? I don't think they expect us to be doing this right now. I don't think they expect the knock to be rocking like this right now.
Lady Anna. Yeah, yeah. Son of Roger and Roger. Okay. All right. Yeah. So actually, we're talking about Pop's wife, man. Preston John. You know, again, over there, they called her Princess Rusadon of Georgia. Here we're just talking about Lady Hannah of Babylon. Now it's saying his son by his black Panian wife was King Vikarama Panian. And he had at least three sons by his Jewish or Hebrew wife, Lady Hannah. His son, David Sauslin, <laughs> became a Babylonian exilar and the husband of Queen Tamar of Georgia. His son, Hanan or Anan or Hani became the prince or king of the Hebrews of Tahama. His son Solomon was the Hebrew prince or Khan of Telmis, who married Queen Lebnu or Labani of the Rubani. And this is one of the high Amazon queen queendoms, all right? Vikarama Panian was assisted by his cousin Kulatungu II, Chola II, of the Hindu emperor of the three Indias to gain the Panian throne. Vikarama was the protector of the Christians, or we're just talking historians, and resisted the approach of the Muslims for him to convert. Now, since the form of quote unquote Christianity, they, the Prester John's follow, the Panian Prester John's follow was expressed in terminology drawn from the Hindu tradition. <laughs> so look at how they're going to tie in this Nestorianism. So they say, oh, this, this is the specific form of Christianity that Prester John's people rock with. Just as the Christians of the West saw the mythologies and legends of the Greeks and Romans as seeds of the gospel. So these Christians saw the Hindu writings as containing seeds of truth. They developed the ideas of Vishnu and Krishna in a Christian direction where Krishna was identified with Christ and Vishnu as a supreme deity of which Krishna was an incarceration or <laughs> incarnation of Vishnu. Krishna is the Lord himself. I mean, you know, dodge your own damn idea. But you see that it's all coming out of you. All this Hindu is coming out of these Israelites. All this Christianity hijack uh, off, offshoots are coming out of the foundation, the culture of you. You got to put you back together again. The idea of the seven avatars, here we go, of Vishnu originates in the Kabbalistic idea of the ten Sephirot. The concept of Devi, Mother Goddess, is close to the ideas of Sophia in the West. See how they're trying to connect it with the Sophia hijack? Sophia would be the fake wisdom, right? And these are oh, uh, Krishna and Vishnu. These carnations they're talking about, you know, with this gospel situation, supreme deity. They ain't talking about the creator. You know, they're just talking about their under the firmament situation. So, again, you got to dodge your own hijack. You know what I mean? They're trying to connect it to Sophia. We're connecting ours with Mama herself. The actual frame. Connected with the actual shape. Now it says he had two sons, Jatavaraman, all right, that's a long name here, and Maravaraman by his wife, who was a so called Christian. Karan, Princess of Kulan, Kulan, Vinad, and Karala. Karala. So again, pay attention to that Kara, because we will be going back into the Karas, man. Like the Karalinas and the Karakatais. So Jadavaram succeeded his father as the Panian king. He rebelled against 
his Cholan Hindu cousins, but was defeated and was given back his throne as a vassal of the Cholan Empire. He was succeeded as the Pandian king by his younger brother, Mara Varman. He married his cousin, the Karan princess, Kathi Karan. Almost sounds like Koran. All right. Mara Varman Sundara Pandyan defeated the Kolan or Cholan uh, emperor. These Cholas would be called Colas, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> like Coca Cola, huh? All right, man. <laughs> Became the second Presto John Emperor of the Three Indies. He married his cousin, Princess Radha, the daughter of Saliman Soli. We're talking about the Hebrew king of Telmas and Queen Lebnu, Limbu Lebana of the Rubani Ghani and Mahdi. All right, so this is what we just got. Connecting with the high queens of the Amazon. And just a little bit more, you know, you can bring it down, bring it down, bring it down. And these are the wars going back and forth. And I guarantee, man, when you start digging on these, these connect and correlate so much with those Mongol skirmishes, man. Uh, you know, between the gins and the, and the, uh, you know, with the Tangu and the the Tartars on this side and that side. I mean, I will almost put everything all in, man, that this stuff starts to really create a lot of duplicates and phantoms with the Mongol history and dealing with this Pani and Chola history. It says Jadar Varman avenges the defeat of his father by completely destroying the Chola Empire and establishing the second powerful Pandian Empire. He also defeats the Karas and Hoysalas and the Kakatiyas. All right, so these are all the offshoots of this Chola Empire. Are, are we just talking about, you know, separate tribes? Different tribes breaking up. During his reign, he provides a golden roof for the temples of Kedambaram and Saran Gaham from the wealth acquired in his conquest. He also gives many grants to the temples in, in Triki, Trangavar, Javar, and Khan Kiparam. He builds a temple at Argar Aragaralar for the merit of Kula Sakara. Around 1259, he acknowledges the contributors of other dynasties to Tamil Nadu. It's another uh, key word here. By building a gate at the Sri Ragan Da Swami Temple in Sharaga, <laughs> something like that, in which he engraves the names of all four great empires of the Tamil Nadu. All right, now these Tamil Nadu, this seems to be really, you know. Kind of like the capital of the Nagas here, you know what I'm saying? Because you got the Cholas coming out, these Tamils. You got the Palavas and the Panians and the Karas, the Karas. All right, so what does this Kara have to do with the Kara? What does this Karas have to do with the Kara Kata? Knowing that, you know, Preston John is already rocking with this Kara Kata. You know, you see it tied in to these Cholas, and you see it tied in directly to this Tamil Nadu. He also builds the East Temple Tower of the Madori Minakshi Temple. All right. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of history here with this family war back and forth, back and forth. That just reminds me a whole lot, man. Every time we go into the Mongol history, Especially on the uh, Genghis Khan side, you know, and the fight for the throne. Everybody wants the throne. On her mother's death in 1350, Trip Hoana became the Amazonian high queen, and her son Hayam Waruk became the king of Maju Pihit Kedar. Kedar. <laughs> Being up in Cedar City, you know. You change that C to a K, you just got Kadar. I said, man, are we just in Kadar, man? It's Cedar City, just Kadar. 
C's and K's, C's and K's. Now check this part out. You know, we'll surf the wave on out. Pandya Sundari, Empress Regnant of the Three Indias. And now they name these empires, you know, these long names here. All right. She married King Joseph II of the Rubani, Gadi, and Mani. All right. Kingdom of Rodin, Eber. Come on, man. Come on, man. Y'all see it? Y'all see it? Remember the Rodins? Look how this connects, man, for the dismount. Look how this connects. For the dismount, go back to that uh, Forbidden Histories drop. We were talking about Sheba. All right, let's get it from here. Let's get it from here. We're just talking to rodents, and we keep seeing that come up, right? Let's just look at it from here. We're just talking about these are the all right. So you got these uh, inscriptions that are literally being found in Arizona. on these crosses or some are swords some got they call them the hushchen swords these are artifacts literally being found in what's called kalelus which means promised land go get the drop now this is what's written on them Britain, albion jacob roman Antim, theodore like theodore rus all right so Venus, let's go um gaul Sian. Israel on the vertical beam of one of the lead crosses is the inscription councils of the great cities together with 700 soldiers now this is AD 800 AD in America my love. this is a forbidden histories of America right we are born over the sea to Kalelus they say an unknown land we're told Texas Sylvanus all text, right? Sylvanus is Solomon. Ruled far and wide over a people. Theodore transferred his troops to the foot of the city Rhoda. And more than 700 were captured. No gold is taken away. Theodore, a man of great courage, rules for 14 years. Jacob rules for six with the help of God. Nothing can be feared. Nothing has to be feared in the name of Israel. We're just talking Roda. Right? Remember the rodents? All this is on the inscriptions in Arizona, Managa, or Utah, Managa, or you could just call it the land of the Prester, right? The land of the Prester, right? Jacob renews the city with God's help. Jacob rules with mighty hand in the manner of his ancestors, sing to Hawa. May his fame live forever. From the egg, the beginning, 8700 to 8900, nothing but the cross. We're talking the town. While the war was raging, Israel died. Pray for the soul of Israel. May the earth lie light on thee. He adds glory to the ancestral glory. Israel, defender of the faith. Israel reigns 67 years. We're talking about a person, right? The next inscription, Israel the second rules for six. Israel the third was 26 years old when he began to rule and turn Nassim war to conquer or die. He flourishes in ancestral honor by day. 8880, Israel III for liberating Tol Texas was banished. He was first to break the custom. They weren't supposed to be, you know, bearing, bearing within these uh, particular uh, boundaries. So he broke the custom because he just, he felt like somebody deserved to be buried that wasn't buried. And then they 
banished Israel or told to Texas, Sylvanus Solomon was ba banished, but Israel the third liberated him and then he was banished. <laughs> so he was first to break the custom. The earth shook, fear overwhelmed the hearts of men in the third year after he had fled, they betook themselves into the city and kept themselves within their walls. A dead man thou shalt neither bury nor burn in the city, right? So this is the custom. They should neither bury or burn him in the city. Before the city, a plain was extending. Hills running the city. It is a hundred years since Jacob was king. <laughs> Come on. Jacob stationed himself in the front line. This is 800 AD in America. Connect this with this Bragantoni, Atan, Osiet, Oseti, Amazon, Prestigion, Con action happening in the 12th century. And then remember the time shifts. Because maybe the 880 is the same thing as what's happening in the 1200s. Easily. Because they're shifting things back at least 1800 years sometimes. Right now we're just talking Rhoda. And I just want you to remember right here that we got... Remember Lance and Lynn, Lance and Lot. Remember Kalelus is Camelot. You have the King Arthur is David. Kalelus is Camelot. Lance and Lynn is Lancelot. We're talking the Davidic Exilarch family. He joined up uh, Israel the third, right? So this is after Sylvanus to Texas or Solomon the Builder. I mean, he's rode up on by Theodorus, another member of the family. This fight over this promised land <clears throat> in Maine and Maine or Maine or Maine of America, right? Israel the third went south to the Toltec lands of Mexico. Israel the third went south to the Toltec lands of Mexico. Yeah, we're talking Mexico, right? So we're talking the Almec, <laughs> right? We must be talking the Almec or the She, right? <laughs> and if we're talking the She, we dang sure know we're talking the the Mongol or the Magi or the Great Ones of the She. So we're talking the Shi, we're talking the Mongo, we're talking the Mongo, we're talking the Shi, we're talking the Tangu, which again, which means we're just talking the what? Tangu, T-A-N-G-U. All right, all right. <laughs> A quick, quick recap for the dismount, right? The Tangu, Genghis Khan, commanders, commanded some raids against the Shi. And who is these Shi? Who is these Almax, right? Who is these Shi? Who are these Shi? What do we get right here? Is this the one we got? Oh, yeah, yeah. The Nehemiah drive. Okay, okay. Uh, that's not the one I want yet, though. That's not the one I want yet. <laughs> Who are these she, man? Because they're letting you know that all men call themselves the she. And Genghis Khan is rolling up against the she.
Oh, this is the one I want right here. You know, I'll be getting linky. You know we get linky. Because this is saying something a little different. Remember, it says the legends of the old gear. Same thing. 775, Nehemiah, Theodore reconquers the American Empire of Kalalu. So we're just in America. So Venus told Texas, is Solomon the builder? Who is the hereditary ruler of this Hebrew Romani? Remember, Roma, Redma, pomegranate. We're talking swan boats. We're talking swan knights. Skip down to here. The last line here says... The legends of this Dane of Ogier, right? The Ogier, which is the ogres, the Shreks, right? The ogre is the Shrek, right? They're just making fun of the what? Referred to the Tawatha de Nanan or Dunan, also known as Mananan or Maine, where the giant ogre heads of the Almec are found. And I said, why did they take it out of this book here? Because it says the same thing, who were known as Man and Man of Maine of America, but it don't say nothing about the giant heads of the Almec right here, right? But here, Maine, Man and Man, Maine of America, where the giant ogre heads of the Almec are found. <laughs> All right, and that's when we just started connecting it, man, and getting back to it, man. And we said, wait a minute, man, we're just talking to she. We're talking the same she that Genghis Khan raided against. And we say, what happened to our people? What happened to the Almex? If, in fact, we have confirmation, if, in fact, we have confirmation that the Almec are the old gear connected with Mananan or Dan or Dananan. Or Sylvanus to Texas. The Almec were at war against Genghis Khan. It was a more and more war with the Shi. <laughs> My Nagi, I said, it's a more and more war with the Almec that call themselves the Shi. Or the Shi. Or the Shi. We're just talking rotor, right? So Israel the third went south. Since we know we're talking Almec, Israel the third went south to the Toltec lands of Mexico and his grandson Makir Amarik, which is also mixed coal to of the Toltecs, was the grandfather of Tapuzin, Israel. Israel the seventh priest of Kitsukoto who left Kolula for the Rhoda in about one thousand. So when we're connecting this Rhoda situation, this Rodan back to this Cholas and Pandians, right? She married King Joseph II of Rubani, Gadi, and Mani, kingdom of Rhoda, Eber, or Kabar. They say in inland Australia now, man. We know we're just talking Amazon, man. So what does Rhoda got to do with it? Who left Cholula for Rhoda. So Israel III went south to the Toltec lands of Mexico. His grandson, Makir Amarik, or Theodorus, is also mixed Kaolta of the Toltecs. Grandfather of Israel the seventh or Tapuzin, who is the priest of Kitsukoda, or Joshua, who left Cholula for Rhoda in 1000 AD. He rejoined the remnant of the Rodans who led e who he led east and then back to Europe 
and some of the Latin Jewish rodents or these Hebrew roda settled in Western Spain where they were trained warriors. They were welcome to the fight to preserve the freedom of Northwestern Spain from Islam, from the Moor, from the Muslim. Because it's a more and more war popping off, man. With this Davidic exilarch family, we're just talking rodents. And just getting back for the dismount, we're just talking rodent Eber. Her son Solomon III became the Preston John Emperor of the Three Indias, and her daughter Radha, also Rhoda, the Queen Consort of Majapahit, wife of King Warbahumi, eventually succeeded her as the Amazon High Queen. Last part is this Solomon II became the Preston John Emperor of the Three Indias in 1370, and he married his cousin Princess Sorar. Ward Hana of Majapahit or Kedar or Cedar, the daughter of Prince Singh Hawadar Hana, the Duke of Pago Hana, and the Princess Iswari of Majapahit. All right, <laughs> a daughter of Queen Trapahuni and Radan, King David the Third. So after all that complicated titles, we're right back to King David. Solomon succeeded his father, Joseph II, Redan Sotor, as king of Rodan, Kabor, or Heber, or Eber, or Eberu, king of the Hebrew. We're just talking Solomon cutting through this lineage of King David when we're only digging on the Davidic Exilarch family. We're talking Kalelu Spanaga. <laughs> and we can't talk Kalelu's. Remember, we can't talk Kalelu's, man. Can't talk Kalelus without talking about promised land because Kalelus means promised land. So how many of these promised land, pure land situations do we got? If Persia's pure land, promised land, Cathay's pure land, promised land, <laughs> uh, Shimbala, Cibola, you know what I'm saying? Kalelus, you're all talking the same thing. You're just talking Cali, Khalifa, or the land of America. The whole land of America. Managa. Uh, and we'll get back into Lost Tribes and Promised Lands, man. And you already know it's one of my favorite books for sure, for sure. For sure, for sure. We'll definitely get back in it. Breaking it down even further. I really like this link a lot. I'm glad I pulled it up so we can continue this. And of course, we got to dig deeper on this Chola Pandian situation. We're pretty much caught up, you know what I mean, where we need to be so we can start really taking some uh, great leaps here, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we got some great leaps to take. We're just talking King David of India ruler of the three three Indians because remember this David here is Genghis Alahua In response to an embassy from Preston John, Pope Alexander III sent a reply in 1177 to Preston John. He's writing Preston John back, man. 
He's like Presser John, what it do? Illustrious, magnificent king of the Indians, king of the Indies, and a beloved son of Christ. <laughs> the fate of this letter is unknown, though it is its intent probably was to gain support for Alexander in his controversy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Sure. In the 13th and 14th centuries, various missionaries and lay travelers such as Giovanni de Piani de Carpini, Giovanni de Marte Carvino, Marco Polo, or Paul, all searching for the kingdom of Crescent John, established direct contact between West and the Mongols. Mongols? Ah, uh, nah. You just talking about them, um, how do you say? Magi. Yeah. Because Magi, as mentioned above, are probably the same as Mongols. Greats. Who is Preston John? A hey, high for digging on the 55th installment of the Preston John investigation that we have been on for years and years and years because we've been searching for the last noble image my naga we've been searching for the last noble image of the negro we've been searching for the water so that we can see clearly and we'll also leave this link for next time i really want to get some of this chronology but uh, maybe next time we'll start with this chronology. And I'll leave the link so you can get ahead of this. You can get ahead of me, man. Go ahead and get, pull this link up. And this is uh, about a, almost a two-hour lecture from Anatoly Fermenko. So it's a great one. Definitely got to get your subtitle on for this one, man. You know what I mean? But, yeah. <laughs> We're talking parallels and duplications in time. Right quick, though. When we talk last noble image. Everything relates today because... You know, we're not we're not stepping out as ourselves, so we're not being treated as ourselves. But we're talking about the Scythian. Sicilians? Oh, oh man, we got some drop out. But we think about our image, we think about our flow. We're not saying something we idolize, we're saying how do we view ourselves? You know what I mean? Like when's the last time we really viewed ourselves through our lens? You know, through the lens of nobility, to be the regals again, to be the the true naga, man. You know, the true lamp to shine the light, you know, that our creator could be proud of us as we surf the wave and everybody sees us surfing the wave. And, you know, they stop being envious and they start saying, you know, how can I surf that way? How can we have peace? How can we bring it all together with unity and get favor from the creator? I just want to pick it up here for the decimal. Let's get to the end of chapter 10. It's been a minute since we got this. But, you know, for the new wave surfers, in case you need to know why we do what we do as we search for the last noble image of the Naga. Just pick it up from here on page 66 of the PDF. Page 120 of the book. And they're looking for Preston John, these Portuguese. He went to ask leave of the Preston. And we went with him and we urged it with great insistence and begged, of, begged it of him. Yet no order for it was given. Because they wanted to go 
and, you know, pretty much snitch on where Preston John's land is. So, so the Preston kept him right there. So far, all is known. All is known. Calvin Han ended his days in Ethiopia. Which one, huh? He, too, was a living symbol of a demystification of the East ending just like the legend of Preston John in the Abyssinian dust. We're talking Ethiopia, right? Now listen up for the dismount, my knock. Let's get it bigger. With that legend for the time being, all hope of a noble image of the Negro. So when, when Preston John got knocked out of your psyche, out of your flow, you don't see clearly, so you don't see yourself, so you don't know. You know what I mean? Like we're not conscious about how how we're flowing with our with our image, how we're really presenting ourselves, because we don't know who we are, right? But we used to have a regal persona that when we vision ourselves, we vision ourselves as royalty. And we haven't seen the royal nature, we haven't been reintroduced to our royalty to our royal nature i mean where's our where's our land where's our things right where's our staff where's our gold so with the with the image of preston john or with that legend with the legend when that went out of our psyche guess what else went at least for the time being all hope of a noble image of you seeing yourself as the royals as the true royalty on this earth, as the seed of Hawa, all hope, all hope of a noble image of the Negro, it went, it left to counter the one that was coming with growing force out of West Africa. Now there's a new image of a Negro, right? This, you know, oh, you, you, you're just walking around, you know what I'm saying, and you're you know, little little garments covering your loins, you know, you got two rocks, you're banging them together. That's the image they were bringing. Now, we know we have royalty in West Africa. We know that. But that's not the image, right, that we were getting, not in our media and not in our books and not in our flow. So when they took our situation here, for sure, we lost track and context of all the royalty everywhere else. But the first thing we lost was our royalty right here my knock they had to take you away and then try to connect you even to a false image of that over there one of the most vivid depictions of the west african image now taking shape in the minds of many portuguese can be found in the esmeralda de cita orbis a geographical historical handbook of the african coast written about 1508 about duarto pequeco piera from which we have already quoted with reference to Master Giacome of Mecorca. Pequeco had worked for years as a civil servant in various parts of the growing Portuguese empire and had an interest or intimate experience of the African slave trade in it all its ugliness. <laughs> so he says, oh, for, for a poor horse, you can receive here six or seven slaves. He typically writes of one place on the coast in which an equal contempt with equal contempt for those who hand in human humans for horses and those who are thus handed in goes on to warn that the captain who is engaged in this barter should guard against these negroes for they are bad people all right <laughs> the inhabitants of this region have faces and teeth of dogs and tails like dogs they are black and shun conversation now. Maybe they're describing some dog-headed people. You know, I can't I can't rule that out. <laughs> but what we need to focus on is that whatever image came later with this ugliness that was attributed to us, with the legend of Preston John, once that hit the Abyssinian dust, once that was gone, we lost all hope of having a noble image, man. Something, you know, within ourselves, not outside of ourselves, but within ourselves to know that we are the regals. We are the royal seeds on this land. 
And we're talking to three Indians, Ka, so we rule the world. Kandawi is Presta of the world. And they say that he is the one that wrote the Voynich Manuscript, my knock. How amazing is that? To decipher, to break down, to look further into. <laughs> I told you this investigation continues, man. Oh, yeah, the so called Voynich Manuscript is a 15th century copy of the original, which was written by him in the 12th century. So they're tripping on this 15th century copy. I want to know about this Hebreo Georgian Indian copy of the Regal. Remember, he's the last, <laughs> the what? The last noble image. All hope of the noble image of the Negro was lost, man, to counter the one that they were putting on us. So they had to eliminate the con of cons right here at home. Get us wanting to get our passport and go somewhere else. Because we don't love the seven cities. We don't love the Septimania. We don't love the promised land that we are already in. We don't love the Cibola. We don't love the Kalelus. We don't love the Shabala that we are already in. Because we have no idea. You know, we're being hijacked in real time, my not. We've been hijacked in real time and we lost all hope of our nobility. And now the writings are encrypted. <laughs> And we got to break the code. And I appreciate all y'all for keeping the code. You know, yeah, man, we, we've been digging on this Vaughn manuscript for a long time. <laughs> then we did a few drops on it. You can always come over here, surf the wave at 432thedrop.com. You can just, you know, put in Vaughn manuscript in the search box. You're going to get all kind of. Uh, you know, different searches, man, pop up, man. But this is one of the ones we did on YouTube that we put up here in 2017. Press the John 19. All right, so we've been digging on the voting manuscript for a long time. I think we even did a, a drop before that, uh, before Press the John 19 on it. So, and yet and still, yet and still, we ain't necessarily been able to put it all together yet. We don't necessarily know what it says at all, right? <laughs> Zion Meditation, Meditative Warrior is going down, man. Make sure you're in that drop stream. Download the app so you can get the Zion Meditation with the family. We just want our noble image back. And, you know, we really want to know what's popping with this Voynich manuscript as well. Because we know, you know, deep down inside, we know it's all happening. And I can't think of no other place I'd rather be than surfing away with you right now, Drop Nation. I do it for you and you only. Everybody else can come over here. You know, they can try to get some information. <laughs> but I know, Drop Nation, that you came over here for the vibration. Allow wild the water for you. And the vibration that you continually, continually give to the tribe. I know the tribe is, is hungry, man. We want food, man. We want this type of food, man. We want that pure water. We want the roots. You know what I'm saying? We want the roots, man. All praise our creator. The architect of our ancient love song. The ultimate design, the magnificent flow that we get to join in and just be a part of and add to and not take away, but continue to add to. So come over here to add to the flow, you know, not to replace, you know, but to increase.
not to take away, but to continue to build brick by brick so we can restore our house in real time. Y'all keep your head on swivel. Remember them protests, man. They aren't your people doing it. You know, these are other folks with other agendas, so if you want to stand up, I'm standing with you because you want to stand up, not because somebody already has some cross streets for us to meet at and march on. You know what I'm saying? So keep your head on the swivel. Dodge the hijacks, dodge the false flags, dodge the stage, and stay focused because they are distracting you from something. They're distracting us from hitting the mark. But every single time, <laughs> every single time we reach our towel, from David to David, all praise our Creator. Allah, Allah, the water for all of y'all, for all the great insight. You know, as you are dropping that drop in the chatterbox, I appreciate you. I'm digging on it with you. I'm right here with you, step by step, man, side by side. We coom, we coom, we coom for Hawa. Allah, Hawa. The Wada. Drop Nation. Keep rising. A hob to all of y'all. Baruch your families. Shalom.